What is euthanasia? Euthanasia is a controversial topic up for discussion that affects both ethical morals and modern medicine. The controversy lies where the euthanasia should be allowed in hospitals and in hospices, and whether a patient should be given the right to decide when they die. Recently, as of November 2017, Victoria, Australia legalized euthanasia. Other places where it has been legalized include the Netherlands, Belgium, and various parts of the United States. There are many sides to this argument, both pros and cons that stem from the public's beliefs and modern medicine beliefs. To the people, we should permit assisted suicide because every being should have the complete autonomy over their choices, and that includes how one chooses to die. Some people will go as far as saying that it affects their Bill of Rights. They also voice that only those who seek it knows what's best for them. Another valid point is that euthanasia and other matters of assisted suicide already exist, but it's called something different, and that is pulling off life support. Contrast to these beliefs, the people of the public also argue that it is immoral to assist in suicide and to take away an innocent life, or that it is merely not pure autonomy because the sick are heavily influenced by family and their doctors. In the eyes of modern medicine and the ethics that follows, doctors and other physicians who support euthanasia and other forms of assisted suicide believe many things, such like people should have complete autonomy over their choices, doctors will always show the best interest for their patients, so therefore they will follow through with whatever the patient wishes to do. Also share the common belief that there is an abundance of unnecessary pain that goes along with the prolonging of a lifespan of an ill patient. While others stick with the standing argument that euthanasia and other forms of assisted suicide becomes antithetical to the concept of what it means to be a doctor and or a physician. It violates a rendition of the Hippocratic Oath that all physicians and doctors must take upon entering the field work of medicine. Suicide and all matters that deal with suicide have stumped philosophers and their ethical agenda. And this can be dated back way to ancient Greece, where Socrates and many other great philosophers lived and pondered this topic. Let's take another leap into the past, shall we? Socrates, a beacon for the study of ethics, lived from 470 to 399 BC. He's a very scholarly man who made a lot of enemies within the city he grew up in due to his frequent of questioning authority and public figures. He was brought to trial under false accusations and was sentenced to death after denying exile. As he awaits for his inevitable death within his cell, Socrates is visited by his friend Crito. Crito begs for Socrates to escape and to continue living off in a neighboring city, but Socrates denies and gives Crito a number of reasons why he would not escape, even if he could. He dedicated himself to Athens by living there his whole life. By living there for so long, he accepted how the laws were and wouldn't be the first to try and run from the consequences given to him by the ruling of the state. One should not fear death, he said, because only the gods have control over human matters and know what comes after death. Socrates, unlike the others, strongly withheld his belief that one should have complete autonomy over their own life and matters that pertain to their own death. Socrates was a philosopher who willingly welcomed death, and as he believed all philosophers should, he consumed the vial of poison that was given to him, and without hesitation, he drank it. Following Socrates came Plato, a student of his, who voiced very strong opinions on the matter of suicide. He states that people who partake in suicide are merely weak beings and have no regard for human life, while Aristotle, on the other hand, thought that suicide was an immoral act that did more wrong towards the society, but not towards oneself. Kant, a more modernized philosopher who lived from 1724 to 1804, took suicide as a very serious offense to mankind. He believed that people who committed suicide were lesser beings and were seen as beasts. A lot of his ethical theories surrounded the idea of acting in accordance with universal law. The act of committing suicide violates the categorical imperative, the categorical imperative being the supreme rule of morality and follows the universal maxims. Kant also believed that everyone should be treated as if they belong in the kingdom of ends. The man who commits suicide is violating the categorical imperative, so therefore it doesn't partake. Here comes a man named Hippocrates, who lived from 460 to 370 BC. He was a Greek physician who is said to be the father of Western medicine. He believed that all illness has a rational and physical explanation. During his time, he developed a medical oath that you may have heard about, the Hippocratic Oath, which is taken by many new physicians to swear themselves to follow professional and ethical standards. Within the Hippocratic Oath, it explicitly says that I will not give a lethal drug to anyone if I am asked, nor will I advise such a plan. Taking reference to the Hippocratic Oath, Hippocrates believed that intentionally harming one's patient would be serving them an injustice. After all of this, a question still remains. Is it ethical to partake in assisted suicide? According to many great philosophers, it is not. But according to Socrates, it is. Well, apart from how these figures of the past have viewed this topic, what do we do now? Should it be left to modern medicine to decide? Should it be left to the public to ponder on? All these questions remain unanswered and need to be discussed. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day.
Bye.